Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and I thought I'd do the four days of Glitchmas. I'm going to show you how to create glitch sounds. I'm going to do four of these before Christmas, hopefully. And I'm going to do a variety of sounds you can use in different ways, but let's listen to the first one. It sounds like this. So something like that. I'm going to show a few variations, etc., but let's get started. So I'm going to switch to the other one. I should have something blank here, I hope. Maybe. Eh. If not, I'll make a blank one. Here we go. So I'm going to start here. I want to make sure the attack is at zero, the sustain is at zero. We're going to bring the gain down just a little bit. And that's just so things don't get too loud. And we're also going to put on the limiter because this can get loud. We're going to go in the generator section. And for this, we're going to use some samples. You can use anything you want. Uh, I'm going to use the drum sampler. And this has lots of different sounds in here. Let's start with something. Uh, I'll use a, a snare sound. That seems like a solid sound. We're going to start from there. Okay, so what we're going to do for this is we need a kind of delay to repeat. So we're going to go in here, find our delay. Perfect. Okay, it's working, but that's not really what we want. What we want to do is actually freeze this. So if I click freeze here. So as long as I'm holding down the key, it'll just keep uh, playing it over and over again like this. One problem though is if you listen while I'm doing that, you hear the snare drum in there as well. So we're just going to turn the dry off or completely, yeah, completely off to silence. Now we're getting that. Now that's okay for a glitch, but to make it sound more glitchy, we're gonna make it much faster. So now it's at 100 milliseconds. Let's move this down. Let's try like 17. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna take this and just modulate this randomly every single time we hit a note. So we're gonna go click on that, click on source A here, and we're gonna just choose, let's try, Note random, there we go. And we're gonna move this up. So it's starting at 40. Actually, that's probably a bit too much. So let's start here, like maybe 4.8 something. I think if you go down to like one, that's maybe too short, but between maybe like two or five or so is good place to start. Then we'll move it up to, I think maximum of like 60 is good. Above that, it starts to sound not as good in my opinion. So here we go. Now when we press this each time, it'll just pick a different value between there, like this. Cool. To make this a little bit more interesting, what we're gonna do is just go in here, choose a bandpass filter. Uh, I'll turn the first one off here. We're gonna change this to constant mode. I'll change this to 12 decibels per octave, move the resonance down. And we'll start fairly low, maybe here, since this is a snare, it shouldn't have too much uh, too much low end anyway. So we'll go in here and I'm gonna use true random for this, for something you'll see in a second. Move this up, let's go to like six, 700 here. Same thing will happen, every time I hit this, it's going to move the high pass filter uh, to a different value. You'll be able to see it down here. And we'll do the exact same thing with the low pass filter, switch that to constant, turn the resonance down. We're gonna turn this up in this case, uh, start like 14 kilohertz. Same thing, I'll do true random. The reason I'm using true random is each instance will be different, so they won't move the same way. The low pass and high pass won't move the same way. Uh, let's bring this down to like a thousand something like this. Play these together. Uh, that's a bit too much. So what I'm going to do is just move this to like 2000 and the same here. 700 is maybe too much. Maybe like 400. Let's try it now. Okay, good. It's still getting a little bit loud, but uh, I'll fix that. Well, I'll turn it down here. Now, last thing, we want a little bit more digital byte to this. So what I'm going to do is just go into here and Coming out of here, we're gonna use bit fun here. 
Uh, I can save this. Yeah, this. I think it's default. So I have it at eight bits here. It sounds almost the same by default. Okay. And what we're going to do is just go here and we're just going to click some of these in the XOR like that. Now it should be a bit more distorted. Well, I should note, I'm hitting the same note every single time. Uh, the changes in the delay time are what's causing that there. Uh, I think 58 maybe is too much. Let me move this down just a little bit. Let's try 46. So again, plenty of glitch sounds. I think that's sounding pretty good. You can do more here. I can reduce the bits even further, like four bits. I think it's maybe not such a big difference, but if you like that, of course, do that. So we have that. Another thing you can do to change this is we can go in here. You can use different sounds here. So here we're using snare one, but let's try it with different sounds. So they sound slightly different, but they all have kind of a similar character there. So you can mess around with that, use different samples, and see what types of different sounds you get. I'll go back to that one snare one. Oh, let's look at maybe a few other ways we can try to do this as well. So we use the delay here. We can also try using this delay mod. So if we go into here, if we play it normally, actually let's turn the bandpass off for a second. That didn't sound so good. What we want to do is move this feedback up, maybe to 90 something, this. And what we want to do is move this max delay. 10 milliseconds is probably too fast, so let's try 50 something. But unfortunately we can't adjust the max delay, we can't really do anything with that. What we can do, however, is take the depth and move this. So we're going to modulate that. We'll do this the exact same way. Try true random. Move this, oh, move it to zero. Actually, zero is probably a little bit too too low. Let's try six or seven and then move this up to 100, like this. And let's hear it with the bandpass on. Now this does have that little pss sound at the beginning, which I don't really like. Sometimes if you change it to a different uh, sound, it won't have that. Okay, uh, but there's actually one more way we can kind of do this. Let's not use the delay mod and let's not use a sample at all. We're gonna use the impulse train here. What this does, I'll turn the effects off for a second. If I play this, you kind of hear like, oh, it's kind of like a buzzing sound. But it's actually just small clicks. We're gonna change this to constant so it's not being uh, affected by what note I'm playing. What we're gonna do is modulate the semitones. So we're gonna go in here, we'll do the same thing, true random. There we go. Move, actually move this up and down like this, here. That, put the band pass on there. Probably have to move this up. Now put the effect back on.
So we're getting those same types of sounds. Uh, maybe I want to move this up a little bit. And you're getting those same types of uh, glitchy sounds. So that's three different ways to do it. I prefer the first method with the delay, but of course you can do this uh, any way you like. They all sound slightly different and will give you different kinds of effects. You can use these in real time. They don't, I don't think they use a, a ton of CPU, but also you can use these to make your own samples and things too. So next time I'll show completely different uh, glitch effects that don't really sound like this. So if this one wasn't your cup of tea, just stay tuned for the next one. Maybe that one will be. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave me any questions or comments down below and check out all the other plugins at melterproduction.com. Till next time, see you.